yes, sir. And uh, another Detroit bass player with us. And what's your name, sir? Christopher Spooner. Christopher Spooner, yes, also known as Chris Spooner. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And he's in the basement with us. We're doing an interview with this guy. You know, like, I'm trying to do every single last Detroit area bass player, whether you live in the Detroit area or if you live in... Um, uh, Mount Clemens. Mount Clemens. <laughs> <laughs> Mount Clemens, Cleveland, New York. I keep on wanting to say Zimbabwe. I don't know why that's the only thing I know is Zimbabwe. <laughs> Very close to Mount Clemens. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere, y'all. So y'all come and hang out with us. If I had to do it on Skype, man, let me know. I, I do Skype interviews uh, uh, with Detroit bass players. We love bass players around here, so come and join us at one of these bass round tables in the basement. Yeah. Also with us, we got another Detroit bass player. What's your name? James Francis. Also, Parker Klein and Max Klein. Max Klein. And we also have Reggie Canty and Bill Washington and James Forme. We also have with us two more bass players right here Carolyn Stallworth and Michael Rich. And Michael Rich in 3D. Look at that close. <laughs> <laughs> That was some cool, uh, tense music you had going for us while we did that. I was expecting something to happen, man, with oh. that music you got had going for us. Hey, man, it's what I brought with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of what you got with you, uh, what is that you got with you? This is uh, Fender Jaguar bass. Wow. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. Yeah, I don't quite know the year, but I'm estimating probably uh, early 90s. Mm -hmm. Early 2000s, okay. late 90s, excuse me. Oh, you uh, like yeah, it? It's, it's uh, one of a couple I got, and uh, yeah, I like it. It's uh, I like the neck. It's got the fast neck, you know. It's got the pretty inlays too, and uh, you know you could dial in a lot of tones, but you got to yeah. be damn near an engineer to. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, what, I, you know, that's what I'm looking at. I'm yeah, gonna just zoom in on that a little bit, but I'm getting used to it. It's got the preamp controls here, so once you turn the preamp oh. on or off, you got the extra bass extra treble boost. Now what are all those other uh, switches down there here, for? Here, this is refrigerator, garage door opener. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow! <laughs> okay, that's Dude, okay. That is so this awesome. is uh, first pickup on and off, second pickup on and off, and then series or parallel between the two pickups. Wow. Mm. And then wow. you got your standard volume and bass and treble, so. It oh, sounds right. like a lot, but you know, you play it enough, you get used to it. What, that's you know. cool. I'd be, worried, I'd, I'd be worried about messing something up in the middle of playing. You know, a lot of the, the criticism I've heard is, man, my hands get in the way, but it's never happened to me. I mean, I'm just. You know, oh, looks like you just flipped the switch. No, I just kind of knocked it, but it's good. Well, that's that's the door, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Lights going on there. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is one of a few I have, but uh, I play this a lot. It's one of my uh, my main rotations, you know. Okay, now I, I had to get that out of the way because I, you know, I just love those Jaguars. I ain't seen one in a while. But I, first question I usually like to ask is, uh, when did you start playing the bass, and a why? Long time ago. A long time. Ago. Why? Uh, why is probably a better question to answer. Um, mainly out of necessity and instinct, I would say. Uh, Explain. Yeah. Wow, that's gonna be hard. Um, I was just drawing a bass, you know. I just I, I've been hearing music and somehow you know when you grow up and you hear music uh, you just draw close to an instrument. Bass was it for me. It's, it's, uh, it's like it called you. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, a lot of R and B in the house and uh, so bass is an upfront instrument and I just kind of gravitated towards it. Later on, being uh, you know leading a neighborhood <laughs> band, bass was I, I got bass. I picked it up and kind of you know. Uh, came easy. Well, where's the neighborhood at? Where, where, you, where you? Um, I grew up in Detroit as a youngster. Moved to Chicago for a while, and then moved back to Clinton Township, where where kind of start the ball rolling. You know, believe it or not, a hotbed of talent. My man right there can confirm. Mike Rich yeah. behind me. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, Mike. But, uh, please. That boy is <laughs> that boy is bad on the bass, man. Well, uh, all he knows is tricks. <laughs> That's all I know is tricks. He got some good tricks, boy. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty much uh, where I grew up and where it started. Well, well um, you know, um, one of the questions I 
like to ask that I forgot to ask my man over there. Um, who who uh, were some of your influences um, on bass as you you know you listen to R&B or whatever? Who, who were some of the bass players that that you listen to and admire or maybe emulated and stuff like that? Um, a lot. It's hard to narrow down the, the list, but uh, off the cuff, um, Bernard Edwards was big and from Chic. Yeah. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, big time. Um, and still is. Um, just a lot to learn from him and, and making a, a simple bass line bounce, you know, mm -hmm. and groove and be in the pocket. <clears throat> Another one was Lewis Johnson, big time too. Um, just in the slap bass stuff, you know, the, that stuff. Yeah. Stomp, yeah. Um, a lot of thumb stuff. Uh, all that uh, Michael Jackson stuff too. Mm -hmm. was, was What he did with that stuff was huge too on me and uh, later on and stuff you know and, and growing up in the suburbs it was a lot of rock influence too you know from Rush to uh, ACDC um, stuff like that so a little bit of uh, both sides of the prison you know well, that's that's pretty cool um drummers too you know I, I actually I started thinking about it the other day I, I'm actually more influenced by drummers than other bass players you know that I see my name's uh, on like Steve Ferroni god you know from mm. Average White Band that dude yeah. <coughs> yeah, it was a beast. Blows me away. Uh, Dennis Chambers, uh, Bernard Purdy, you know, to name a few. Um, Tony Thompson from She, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, guys like Lamont Johnson, too. Another Detroit yeah, based brainstorm. Well. Yeah, I actually had a chance to sit down with him, and that was an experience. Yeah, so you like that groove on the bass drum and off that snare, huh? Yeah. Being right in that oh, little, yeah. that little, Absolutely. This little section there that needs. And there you are. Pocket. It's, yeah, it's, man. It's what it's called, and that's uh, where I make Keeps my Keeps everybody living, bouncing. You know? See, mm -hmm. hey, here we go. Yeah, oh, and that's, shoot. I don't play a lot of notes, you know. I'm not, uh, you know, I've never been in a situation, We, me and my friends joke around, where we get paid by the note. You know, <laughs> has yet to happen. <laughs> but uh, rather, I would sit back and groove and kind of, you know, sign off on a song that way. Mm -hmm. And not play, uh, overplay, you know, and... Uh, you can make just an, as much of an impact that way as you can by, you know, absolute filling absolute. up the noodling. You know? Absolute. Okay, Dave. Well, yeah, let yeah. me let me ask you. Um, um, who some of the people you play play with? Who some of the people you are currently playing with, and all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, right now, it's uh, I gravitate pretty much between three groups, and that is um, one uh, Nadir. Um, Say that again. His name is Nadir. Nadir. Oh, Nadir. Right? Yeah, and uh, he's a, a guy from Detroit who is a really talented uh, singer, songwriter, and stupid bass player himself. Um, and I joined his band, and, and we've been recording his CD for about a year and a half, which just was released recently uh, with a couple videos that are out. I'm sure you could dig them up and find them. Well, no, no, no we, 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 I'm lazy. I don't want to dig. Tell, okay. tell me how to... <laughs> uh, I think they're on YouTube. You either look up his name or mine and you'll find find that stuff. But uh, uh, his CD release party is just up the corner. So, you know, it's uh, it's pretty fresh news that his CD's done. And a lot of high expectation on that one. In addition to that, um, I play with a girl by the name of Maini. And Maini is kind of... Uh, Acoustic rock soul, you know. How do you spell Miami? M a y a e n i. She's. Uh, I did the same thing with her. I, you know, I recorded her CD, and uh, she's had some major label interest, and you know, so there's a lot of high expectations. It has yet to be released, but I'm expecting that soon. We've cut videos and done all that other stuff in the meantime, you know. To videos. Prepare. The videos again. We can find On her too. And again, look up her name, either okay. Miami or again. I'm sure you could, you know, look my name up and find it rather easily anymore and and uh, then I got my wedding uh, funk soul band uh, the Saints of Soul and uh, that's you know three horn players and you know we play all your wedding standards you know mm -hmm. and that's that's a lot of fun those guys are you know my family they're just good guys to be around and you know there could be but two or three people there and we're still having a good time you know that's, uh, that's all it takes yeah but, but uh, so that's, you know, it's just those three and, you know, I, other than that, you know, I kind of noodle around. I got a home studio, you know, so I'm always trying to, you know, 
I got a million songs that no one's heard of or ever ever will, you know. Uh, but it's it's my it's my other cigarette, you know, that I have, my other passion. Uh, you you uh, ready to go tour? You you, you going out yet? Can you take um, a go? Uh, you know, if they ask uh, you, it, there's always that possibility, you know. Um, and it's I'm always open to it, but you know, there's always a lot of. Uh, fine print as to why I'm just not going to drop what I'm doing and go open up for a puppet show <laughs> in Zimbabwe. <laughs> you know, I've got to be real about it, you know, so uh, I'd like to say yeah, but you know, Earth, Wind and Fire has yet to call, so I'm going to say no right now. Well, shoot, uh, it'll be Verdeen to call you, so I don't think it's yeah, going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get my hair the same first, that's the hold up. That's the hold up. But uh, yeah, you know, it's always, uh, you know, I like playing live. Uh, that's a big, that's a big thing for me. I like, uh, you know, the getting out there and responding with with an audience, you know. Um, and I, I've been lucky enough to to get some good recording hours in over the last year too, and that's been a lot of fun too. So, you know, I don't, I don't have any set plan on on touring or doing any of that. It's just kind of fallen on my lap, thank God. And if it continues to, I just take it, you know, that's one good. at a time. Really. That's good. Any tracks? Of yours that we can hear? Um, yeah, um, stuff that I've written. Yeah, you'll probably never hear it. Man. Oh, but, <laughs> Don't so. search for it on YouTube. <laughs> you won't find it. Uh, it's simply an invite only. But uh, yeah, you're more than welcome to. It's, you know, it's just it, again, you know. I've so, got, so if we want to hear, it, we gotta, we gotta get a hold of you. On yeah. how, how do we get a hold of you? First of all, uh, just you know, the Facebook type deal is probably best. Um, What's your name on Facebook? Uh, it's either Chris or Christopher Spooner, one of the two, I'm sure. Um, and then we got to say, hey, can we hear some of your stuff? And then you, maybe? Yeah, I, I'll, mm -hmm. I have, it takes a House and Senate type vote. Two <laughs> thirds <laughs> <laughs> so, majority role. Yeah, I can't guarantee, you know, and then we take a break in between, so I can't guarantee <laughs> oh, oh, it so gets done. You want done. some cush money in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that does push things through yeah, faster. There you go, admit, there you, you go. Uh, bribery does help in this case. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, it's. Um, I do that mainly. I've collected gear, just like probably of us all over the years, you know. So I got uh, a nice little man cave, you uh, know, and uh, uh, I figure I got more technology than the Beatles have. So I just don't let it collect us, you know. I'm always in there just trying to create some crap, you know. That uh, I figure if I put a hundred ideas down, one or two might be worth taking to another level. And, and you and, will, um, when you, when you feel satisfied to release something, you will share it with. Uh, your fellow bass players, right? Your Detroit yeah. bass player? Yeah, when we have our comedy splinter site. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to you go. fill it up with many of my tracks. Uh, but uh, we'll see, you know. Okay. Never say never. That, that's right. Um, did anybody have any questions they might want to ask this fine bassist? Uh, yes, yeah, what is your other standard rotation of basses? Um, I have um, a Gibson Les Paul bass that uh, that I really like. It's a solid bass. I, again, have flats on that. And um, I have uh, the Sadowski, Blessed by the Pope. Again, I must mention. Um, the Pope Star? Mm -hmm. I also Pope have a uh, Warwick Corvette bass. And, um, oh, what do I have? I'm forgetting that. This is, a, I feel so terrible. Don't feel bad. Yeah, I can't believe there's another bass that, that I'm not thinking of. Other than this. Well, if you don't remember it, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, I try to rotate them all. You know, they all have their different characters and, and things. Um, but uh, now you had mentioned strings a little earlier, and I, I'm noticing you're using flat rounds on another bass also. Mm -hmm. The flat rounds give you what? 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 switches you over to the flat rounds more so than the bitey or uh, round rounds. It's, or it's round. the. Uh, the old school yeah. in me, I believe. Very cool. Um, the Detroit Motown in me. It you de know. definitely has a purpose. No <clears throat> I, uh, I've never been one to have a really high uh, quality uh, sound like you might find, you know, with Marcus or, or in gospel. What do you mean high quality? Man, that's very a high end. No, that uh, sounds better. banging that you're doing. Uh, I mean, don't, don't ever degrade that. You, you, rather, you well, I've had, a, I always have that's just been a dirtier sound. sound, you know, oh, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, like Larry yeah, Graham. It's more of like a high uh, five. Thing yeah, because you in there. Uh, There's a little bit of dirt in it, you know. And so the, the flats allow me to take and smooth out some of the growl a bit. Yeah, man. You um, and if I buy the, if I get the right gauge, you know, I could still do a lot of the. You know the pop stuff. It doesn't suffer at all. Well, what, what are your gauges? 
Um, I usually go for a medium light or a light gauge, light gauge? primarily. Medium yeah, light. but um, this this has got a round set on it now. Mm -hmm. And two, you know, uh, in a in a mix of a band, when you're playing flats, I mean, it's just there's no question that there's a bass player present at no matter what volume. You know, yep. there's that floor there. Yep. You know, yeah. and so I don't know. I just I like the flats because it seems like you feel it in your chest no matter what the setting. Yeah. Now again, there's no Tabernacle Choir calling me to play bass for them <laughs> uh, based on my flats. You know, and that's okay. But it, it seems to serve that's its purpose like. for the for the for the bands I'm playing with. You Do know? you play with effect loops at all or effects? Oh, you know what? I'm terrible with that. I, I I'm such a gadget head. I, I man, I have sh uh, shelves of gadgets. But I, I use a fraction of them. Yeah. Um, well, uh, you know, Maini and uh, the Saints are. You know, I play uh, just bass for them, clean. Mm -hmm. uh, when I get to Nadir, I can doll it up some and throw a Mutron or a, a kind of a synth bass yeah. Mook effect on. Yep, yep. Mook, yeah. Which, which I like um, to get uh, like a Stevie Wonder type vibe. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I really. Uh, I'd like to go off, man, and just plug everything in one day and just dim the lights, you know. But uh, yeah, go Merrick Harrison on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> currently, currently no. Yeah, very cool. All right, you know that brings up a question. Do, uh, when you mentioned the the uh, wedding band guys, yeah. so you played standard wedding song. What are today's standards? Give me a few names of some of the today's wedding standard songs. You play that funky music, Ivan, mm -hmm. your Dock of the Bay. Your... <laughs> yeah, I try to I try to keep it as, as traditional as I can. Uh, in all due respect to our bass forefathers, you know, and not new right. too much in the songs, you know. Yeah, that's so that's I, a good thing. I try to do that, but uh, yeah, all that all that stuff that. Uh, you hear people getting sloppy drunk too. You know. Sick house. Any any all day. And it is good that you say that you keep your noodling in check. Yeah. Because that is a that is a big thing. You you see some bass players are so busy. It's like what are you actually telling me? You know, what are you saying? Yeah. And you eliminate a lot of the noodling. It's like, ah, oh, there's the groove. There was a time where I was very much that that uh, where I would but we all did it, I'm sure, yeah. You know, just mess up a song with with, uh, <laughs> with just everything I had in my wallet, you know, of, of licks. <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, I, just one day it hit me like, you know, it just gets me nowhere. I, the song sounds better with just bass, you know, and that's just, it's just as cool as, you know, you know, the, going off like that, you know, actually more so. I mean, so, uh, man, I, I like to hear you go off on those on that, man. That's a great bass. Man. Oh, yeah. I'd love I to hear that. you just go wacky on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But maybe you can close out with that. Any questions with uh, from any uh for this fine bass? Is anybody else? Ask away. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say it again. <laughs> what kind of app are you using? Uh oh, man. That's a that's a that's yeah, a, got that a drama that is like as the world turns, it changes day by day. Currently. Currently. <laughs> I'm using a Eden 212 with my Ginsben Shuttle 6.0 head. Hmm. That's cool. And it's getting me through, but man, my heart was broken. I had my low down sound flip top cab. It was a beautiful piece of, uh, it was like Ethan Allen of bass cabs, you know, it just looked good. But it just over time, you know, I just played with that thing and played with it and played with it and it just. It sounds like a fart every time I play my <laughs> five string. Excuse me, I'm sorry, but that's it bums me out. But so this is what I've this is the Frankenstein that it's become now. You know, and it gets me through. So you yeah. saying the cabinet sound changed that you were using? Uh, I think the wood is just kind of warped and suffered. And, you know, I need someone to look at it and With the really cabinet? get. Yeah, yeah. Really? Someone needs to take a defibrillator to it and really wow. give it. Which uh, flipped out? What, what it was, was it? a three ten. Okay. Flick top, and uh, I ran on, on the head was that Ginsbens that I'm using now. Okay, okay. And it was it sounded tough. I used it a lot for a okay. lot of situations, you know. And there's, you know, it's just been too many beers spilled on it, too many kicks, you know, wow. to it, all that stuff. So the David Eden stuff is holding up then. Excuse me. The David Eden stuff. So far, up. so far, but you know, given my luck, it's sure yeah. to have a lifespan that's <laughs> very short. Yeah. yeah. Now he just mentioned something about beer stains. 
Uh, bass players, you play bass, it has a lot of vibration. When yeah. you play, please do not sit any liquids <laughs> on your amplifier. Right. Yeah. Doing a yeah, doing a performance. Game, no. Don't like let dance. don't let anybody else do it either. That's the biggest no-no, right? Yeah, yeah, don't let them sit. If it's got to be somebody. It should be you. If yeah. you have to, put chicken wire around it. Yeah, right. <laughs> put something around it. Some sort of barricade. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of people don't guns. know that. I mean, that vibration. I get the that glass to start moving like this on your amp, and then. It's on the there floor, you know, all over you. Yeah. Sparks flying, your amp catches on fire, but hey, you might take the tone. <laughs> so it, it improves it. Maybe that's what my cat It'll be a great show after that. <laughs> great live show. Yeah, the bad part of this stuff is so expensive, though. Yeah, you know, yeah. You don't want to fry a $2,000 head, man. No. Let's see, that's why you get some of the lower line, like, some of the old used cabs. They're expensive heads. too. Yeah. Man, I that would have fried run you $500. Really? Yeah, they're not and cheap. And stuff. That stuff is expensive. Yeah, you get what you pay for, you know. I yeah. mean, if you want quality, you got to pay for it and it'll last you, but you, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, well man, we ain't, we ain't want to keep you, man. You know, um, we uh, just wanted to ask you a few questions for you to tell us your story and everything. Is it I'm just now getting comfortable? Actually, you know, <laughs> <laughs> all right, start it over. Is, is, yeah, going through the deodorant now. <laughs> <laughs> we well, can tell. Yeah, for well, free, yeah, sitting yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bring a lot. Was it, hands. was it anything that you like to say in closing that you might want to share with us? Around the world, because you know we worldwide now. Yeah, that's that's good. Zimbabwe's China. come up a lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, China, Australia. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I appreciate you guys uh, having me out here. Thanks for your time, and uh, yeah, recognize the Detroit bass player community. It's it's for real. Uh, dudes are are real cool, and everyone has something to offer. You know, I've run into a, a lot of uh, knowledgeable guys at every level of playing, and everyone has something unique to offer. There's been no person on base that I've run into that doesn't have anything to offer at uh, at any level so yeah we uh, had a dude in here just only been here only been playing a year and I learned quite a bit from him yeah as did I as did I so uh, yeah that's uh, that's my piece well could you could you just before you, you do some of that slappity poppity stuff on the air. I want to hear that all day. No, okay. Yeah, could, could you think? Could you just all play us something out, man? Uh,